Jason Eisner. And we'll answer your questions. Thank you. I also like to call up uh, some of our cast. We have uh, Molly Dunsworth, who played Abby in the film, and uh, Nick Bateman, who played Ivan. And uh, I also like to bring up our DLP, Kareem Hussein, who's here. Oh, there he is. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll just open it up for questions if you guys have any. Yes? How did this movie come about? Why did you think David Brunner was credited as the dirty cop? Why, why did you credit him as being the Yes. Okay. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a long story, uh, but I'll try to make it short. Um, I, uh, a couple years ago, I was working at a, a video game comic book shop, and that's how I met Dave Brunt. He, he, would, uh, he would come into the store, and uh, I met him at, uh, through working there, and he would come in and read comics and play video games, and uh, he was just such an amazing character. And then when he found out I was interested in making movies, uh, he said, Jay, you got to put me in one of your movies someday. And so when we came up with the idea for the Hobo with the Shotgun uh, original fake trailer that we made, Dave Brown was just perfect. But he had never acted a day before in his life. So when you watch that trailer, you're act actually watching his real frustration and rage. <laughs> um, and then when it came time to do the feature film, uh, we realized that making a feature with Dave would be really hard on him. He's on disability, and the role is very physical. And... Uh, it had always been his dream to play a cop in a movie. Even uh, I can remember him coming to the store and uh, when people weren't around, he would uh, pretend to interrogate me as if he was a cop. <laughs> and, uh, so it was always his dream to play the role of a cop. Actually, he, he wanted to be a police officer, uh, but when he was uh, 19 years old, he got hit by an 18-wheeler, and that's why he had to have a hip replacement, and so he wasn't able to be a police officer but uh, we were able to make one of his dreams come true. And so when it came time to uh, cast the role, uh, we sat down with Dave and uh, we thought of uh, who we thought would, could, who could do him justice in the film. And uh, when he found out that Rugger Hauer was down, his, he was just so happy and filled with joy. Any other questions? Over there, yeah. <laughs> That's their pet. <laughs> the tentacle beast. Yeah, it's like, they're like having fun with it. Like it, it they're like playing with it. <laughs> yes. Which composer was the massive John Carpenter fan? Uh, is, is it, did Adam come? No, no, he's not here. Uh, he's a good friend of ours, and he's been working with us all along as well. His name's Adam Burke. And, uh, he had a very high-pitched, kind of watery sort of synth going on. Oh, yeah. Huge inspiration, for sure, as a carpenter. Yeah, Carpenter is one of my favorite directors and composers, and so he was definitely a huge inspiration on our temp soundtrack. <laughs> yeah? Well, what was the hardest scene to shoot? <laughs> hmm. The hardest scene to shoot? Yeah, probably the skate fight, yeah. The apartment attack. Yeah, what do you think? Behind the bridge, man. Behind the bridge was tough. Yeah, that was a tough scene, too. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were all tough. Yeah, yeah. They, were, they were all real tough, but maybe, maybe these guys can answer what scene was the hardest for them to do. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I don't know. I loved every blood-soaked minute. <laughs> Um, well, you saw as I played Ivan, but I also played Rip, um, the plague demon guy with the sword. So the hardest uh, for me was, um, I do martial arts and I do bow staff, but in this movie I had to do a sword. They made prop swords, especially for me. On the day of that scene going through the hospital, I go to the prop guy, uh, I need to warm up, can I grab the sword off? He's like, oh, we broke every single sword. <laughs> I was like, what? He's like, yeah, you gotta use the real metal sword, it's like seven pounds. And so the stunt I had to do is I had to throw this sword under my arm. As it's spinning in the air, I have to do a spinning hook kick and catch the sword under my leg. So I'm like, oh shit. I put this suit on. The suit weighs 30 pounds. It's metal. I'm wearing a body cloth, a full black suit. I'm sweating balls. Of course, we do this, this scene at the end of 11 hours. And I try to look through these lenses in the eyes because you can't see my eyes. They're fogging up. I can't see. So I've got to do this. Not hit the girl, look like I hit the girl, 
<laughs> land it. I did this scene for I did this what forty times. I caught it eight times. So, but as you saw, it worked out for one of the scenes. So that was the hardest for me. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of sweating balls, I'm sure we were all sweating balls in here. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, yeah, Richard. Um, all the pictures on the walls of you know, people they killed, people <laughs> Jesus, Abraham Lincoln. Who's some of the other people? I'm just curious. Uh, the Easter Bunny's on there. <laughs> <laughs> Joan of Arc is on there. There was a Tyrannosaurus Rex around the corner as well, too. <laughs> Those, uh, th those are, you know, establishing the plague have existed through time, and uh, you know they've just exacted uh, violence and assassinations throughout history. <laughs> uh, there's a question right behind. Yes. Uh, what was the significance of the blue, yellow, and red scenes in the movie? <laughs> blue, red, yeah. 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 Yeah